Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about preference relations and what makes a preference relation a rational preference relation. We're going to talk about the three things it needs to satisfy. What is a preference relation? Well, a preference relation is just a way of describing preferences. So we've got Bill, he's choosing between a Mac or a PC. He's got three options or three ways that he can rank those two computers. He can say that he prefers a PC, he can say that he prefers a Mac, or he can say that he's indifferent. So really a preference relation is we're just trying to formalize those preferences in a way that we can write them down and later use them to make utility functions. So a preference relation, again, really just describe preferences. So let's just write out those options and introduce some notation. So the first option, we said that he could prefer the PC. We would say PC and then this squiggly greater than above this squiggly line. So that means that he weakly prefers a PC to a Mac. We could say that he prefers a Mac, and then we would say PC is this squiggly less than with a squiggly line Mac. Another way to interpret that is to say that a Mac is at least as good as a PC, or a Mac is weakly preferred to a PC. We could be indifferent. Bill could be indifferent between a PC and Mac, and then we just say PC squiggly Mac. This is approximately, so the PC is as good as a Mac, or Bill is indifferent between a PC and a Mac. We could also say that Bill's preferences are a little stronger. Maybe he strongly or strictly prefers a PC to a Mac, and then we would just use the squiggly greater than. We could say that Bill strictly prefers a Mac, and we could say then that PC is this squiggly less than Mac, or again, that a PC is not strictly preferred to a Mac. A Mac is strictly preferred to a PC is what we're saying in option five. Now that we know what a preference relation is, what makes a preference relation rational? Well, there are three requirements. You need to be complete, you need to be reflexive, and you need to be transitive. What does it mean to be complete? To be complete just means that you always have an opinion. So Bill walks into Target, you could give Bill any two things in that Target, and he could say, well, I prefer this one, or I prefer that one, or I'm indifferent between the two. And Bill could do that for any single item that you give him in the whole entire world. There are no two items that Bill looks and says, I don't have an opinion. He does have an opinion. It could be that he's indifferent between the two, but he definitely has an opinion between any two objects that you show him. So complete, pretty simple, you always have an opinion. Now reflexive is kind of strange. Reflexive is like in math where we say two is greater than or equal to two. And you're like, I mean, I guess two is greater than or equal to two, but it seems sort of weird to say that. It's a condition we need in order to satisfy rationality. So everything is at least as good as itself. Remember we have that nice squiggly greater than over a line to mean weakly preferred to or at least as good as. So for Bill, that would mean that a PC is at least as good as a PC or a PC is weakly preferred to a PC. Again, here I just think, well, two is greater than or equal to two, which is true, but seems kind of weird, whatever. It's reflexive, so we can move on. Transitivity is the one that we tend to focus on the most. Now transitivity, the equivalent in math is to say, well, if three is greater than or equal to two, then two is greater than or equal to one, then three is greater than or equal to one. So the way I like to think about this is to be transitive means you're internally consistent. So a good example of transitivity, a preference that is transitive. If I say that I prefer apple to blackberry and I prefer blackberry to cherry, and then I follow that up by saying I also prefer apple to cherry, that is transitive because if A is greater than B, B is greater than C, then A should be greater than C, and I've demonstrated that here, so I'm transitive. What is an example of not being transitive? Well, let's say that I go to a diner and it's got two types of pie, apple and blueberry, and I say, cool, I'll take the apple. The waiter comes back and says, hey, we have a third option today, we have cherry pie, and I look him dead in the eye, straight faced, and I say, well, in that case, I would like a blueberry pie, please. And you're like, why in the world would you not choose blueberry when it was an option before, and now all of a sudden this third option makes you change to something that was available before and you didn't pick it. So that's what it means to not be transitive, and I think it's important to have an example of when it violates transitivity in your head as well. To have a rational preference relation means that you are complete, so you always have an opinion. Your preferences are reflexive. Two is greater than or equal to two and you're transitive, you stick with the choices you make regardless of what other options come up, and you are internally consistent. So hopefully this gives you some intuition and a better understanding of how preference relations work and how to check if a preference relation is indeed rational. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.